Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm finally, finally going to be going through our comments. I am drinking some Vita Coca pressed coconut water because I'm feeling like shit. My sleep schedule is all messed up. I am all over the place. Stay up all night and then fall asleep like around six in the morning, don't wake up till like two, end up taking a nap at eight, and then I just keep, like, I don't know, like, I'm trying, I'm, I keep thinking, like, if I just keep this going, I will eventually go back to normal hours. I have been wanting to do this for a little bit here. I need to do the comments. I really like doing, um, the comments in a video, because a lot of times the stuff you guys leave in the comments is like really good topics and shit like you guys are way better at this than i am so um it's just kind of nice so let's hit this shit let's start from the bottom and work our way up Oh man, I, I got some shit in here. Let me see. How long has it been since I've done this? Apparently, 10 days. Okay, so here we go. And this was on Fix Writer Self Sabotage Part 4 Things We Can't Control. Carol said, I don't know why I always yell your name, Carol. I think it's because you said I scared you the first time you heard your name in a video. Okay, Carol says, My hang-up is having a reader base. Or rather, I don't have one. So to fix it, I'm going to start with joining the crew to get help. Oh my gosh, do that. And the new tiers are up. And I'll, I'll talk about those later. I'll probably do an, another video on that. But I'm really introverted, so I get freaked out. Honestly, you might not think this, but I'm very introverted, too. Um, get a couple drinks in me, and I'm fine. Um, but in most uh, social situations, I don't engage. Um, I always think about it, but I never do it. And then... Typically, like, uh, I think that's why, like, performing is so easy because for me because there's a barrier between me and everybody else. So if I'm on stage, there's a barrier. If I'm, like, when I was bartending, I was behind the bar. Um, if I'm, like, doing a panel, like, I'll be at the Bombay Beach Lit, Fet, uh, Lit Fest on March 23rd, I will be at a table, you know what I'm saying? Like that separation is always helpful for me. And doing it like this is always helpful for me too. Like talking into the little green dot next to the dark black dot, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, get involved. Um, one of the the big things people say they like about me is the community building, which is weird because I thought I gave off this thing of me hating everybody. So there's that. So moving right along, let's see. We have Joe here, and Joe says on the same video, um, you're doing extremely respectable work. Oh, shit. Thanks, Joe. And I appreciate there being people like you giving unknown poets an outlet. Keep going strong. Well, shit. Um, I try. I don't think I do enough, honestly, for um, the unknown poet community. Um, so hopefully I am doing okay. And I appreciate um, that my work is respectable to you, Joe. Um, but yeah, Carol, send me some stuff. Joe, send me some stuff. Let's see what you guys got. Let's do this. Daniel says, excellent sermon. Thank you, Father Matt. Yes, and you guys need to tithe to the church of Matt. 
Um, yeah, whatever. Or just throw people into a volcano. Either one's fine. And that was on artist slash writer depression coming down the mountain and what to do. Ah, yes, I see. And I was talking a little bit about um, my ancient missionary work back in the day. So that, that, that checks out. Um, and then we got a couple um, from God of Grind. Um, we got some thumbs on Fixed Writer Self-Sabotage 5, Discouragement and Distractions. Thank you. Um, and then on God of Grind for things I hate about the online book community, um, I'm a little bag of chips, okay? And then, do we need more male writers? A rant. And God says, I identify as a book. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say this. I'm assuming you're being friendly and playful and stuff like that, so that's cool. But um, there are a lot of people who leave comments, and not just on my videos, but on other people's videos. Um, and they do this thing where they say something that they think's funny in context of one thing that was said during a video. And then they just post that one little thing thinking that they're being clever, okay? The problem is, out of context, nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. And when you say something really little and slight like that, it comes off like you're trying to be a troll. And I don't think this is what um, God of Grind is doing. Um, but if God of Grind is trying to troll, you're doing a bad job. So try harder. And if you're not being a troll, be, be a little more open. Like, say a little bit more when you leave comments. So people know whether or not you're being a dick or not. If you ever wonder, like, when you go into comments and you see somebody leaves a comment and then there's other people leaving replies to that comment. And you're like, oh, that's cool. And then you're like, how come no one ever leaves replies to my comment? Because you leave little fucking comments like this and they're not open-ended enough for anyone to have a conversation with you and you can't read tone in a comment so if someone were to say like why are you a bag of chips that sounds like argumentative like we're gonna get into an argument right here but i don't think god of grind is doing that but i'm using this as an example because i see people do this a lot and um i've heard from other people who are like talking about, um, especially with booktube, but like I'm trying to get more involved in the community and I leave comments and <clears throat> nobody really engages with me. And I'm like, well, what are your comments? And just like, you know, like excellent or great job. Like that's cool to leave those comments because every comment helps a channel. But if you want engagement, be open. Think of a question that you could ask either the person who made the video or the other people in the comments. And when you leave comments on other people's comments, don't leave little comments like this. Open them up. And so um, I think these are the only comments I got, of, got from God of Grind, and they all happened on the same day. So um, uh, maybe God of Grind was just on a, um, a me binge. So we'll see if God comes back. They always say he will, but we never know. Um, the Writing Sisters, hello, Lauren. Um, Starbucks, yes. Um, I'm not having it now, but I was on that video. Let's see. <clears throat> then Lauren says, I think it's easy to lift up others like if they think their work isn't good enough but it's hard to take your own advice. Oh my fucking God. It is so hard. Do you know how hard it is for me to fucking send out a newsletter? Like I go through phases where I do really good with it and I see great results. And then like I get like all like gun shy on it. If I took my own advice, dude, I would definitely, not, I would, my life would be very different. So let's start taking our own advice, shall we? Come on, do the thing, bro. Um, uh, these videos are full of great advice. That is a very nice comment. 
Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate you. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you want to see how to use comments for engagement, Bookish is going to fucking send us to school right now. Okay? So everybody strap in. Bookish says, I think one of the toughest things is to be honest with yourself about the difference between doing things to avoid working on your stuff and doing things to recharge so you can do your stuff. I think that's why so many writers of the past set aside specific time for work, treated writing like their job, because it was, and when that job was done for the day, they did whatever they wanted. Today, few writers have that luxury, so it's harder to make that separation and draw that distinction. Holy shit. So true, so true, so true. So let's talk about a couple things here. <clears throat> um, the difference between avoid working on your stuff and doing things to recharge. Okay. I would say that was annoying. Still annoying. I would say the best way to determine this for yourself is if are you like sitting down to work or looking at your computer from across the room going and you're like Ugh, and you're just doing the oh and then like suddenly Netflix comes on the TV and you're just scrolling. You're not watching a specific thing, you're just scrolling through. That may be avoiding work, okay? Jumping on Instagram when you're, like, wanting to sit down and write, that may be avoiding work. Me watching travel vlogs when I'm supposed to be making videos and writing, that may be avoiding work. But the recharging, recharging is something that you should, like, be preparing for. Like, if you go, you know what? I need a beach day. I need to, like, fucking, like, really... I need to go take a hike. I need to um, go for a drive to whatever place you want to go to. That's something you have to prepare. You have to plan that. And when you are... When you mentally set in your head, I'm going to recharge. I need to, like, get my shit together. Oh... That's a huge thing. Like, when you plan, that's recharging. Now, there are other times, too, when, and I'm not trying to be horribly crass here, but when, like, you have writer's block, and then you, like, can't do anything, and then you go and you have sex or something, and then you come back and you can write. Um, that is an unplanned recharge that I 100% think everyone should do. Um, in fact, uh, I don't know if it was Tom Wolf or Thomas Wolf. I can't remember now. But um, they used to um, like jerk off in the morning every time before they started writing, and it like cleared their mind. And I could totally see that. I could totally see that. Um, but like talking about how writers set aside specific time to work, like um, Hemingway would like try to get all his writing done before noon so he could start drinking. Like, he didn't like to drink while he was writing. Um, so he's like, you're not going to get a drink until you finish your writing today, son. And he's like, well, shit. And it probably started like, oh, well, I'll just type until 8 p.m. And then I'll drink. And then a year later, I'll just type till 6 p.m. And then I'll have a drink. And then, like, da-da-da-da-da. Okay. I'll type till breakfast, and then I'll get drunk. Um, so, yeah. So, um, that's really good. And because of, especially in America, the cost of living, trying to find any time to do anything other than work is almost impossible. So, I hear you. Thank you for the comment. What do we got now? MJ. MJ says, love this. And... You know what? I don't know if MJ was that excited, but there's an exclamation point. So I'm going to say it like MJ really meant it. Love this! Okay, there you go. A lot of what you said hits home. Schedules and lists are my jam. I need to use um, Dungeons and Dragons function. No, I'm just kidding. That's do not disturb. But I want you to know that when I first read this, I thought it said Dungeons and Dragons. 
I need to use do not disturb function and time limits on apps a lot more. I do too. I really fucking do. Because a lot of times I don't even realize I'm using my apps. I really fucking don't even think about it. I really, really don't. And then all of a sudden I look outside and the big giant fireball out there ain't there no more. And it's nighttime. And I said, what did I do with my fucking day? So, yeah. MJ. We gotta do this. Carol says, I've been so unmotivated to write lately. So I think I need to journal that shit out so I can make room for more creativity. If journaling helps you do that, I highly recommend that. Like if that is something you have done in the past and that works, I am 100% on board for it. I am on the fence about journaling myself because um, I would just rather use that time to write if I'm going to take that time to journal in the first place. So that's just me. Um, but I know everything is different for every person. So if journaling helps you like cultivate and ruminate ideas, then fucking do it. And all of this stuff, like a lot of this, I, and I'm not a huge fan of like, I don't know what it's called, like NPC or something, but like, um, no, it's got an L in there. It's like what words we use. Um, neural linguistic NLP, I think is what it is. I don't know what the P stands for, but, um, like the words we use, um, have an effect on us. So instead of saying like, um, I think I need to journal, say, I'm going to journal today. Like just little things like that. Like pay attention to the words we use repeatedly to describe ourselves or describe the situations we're in. And I know that's silly, but it does, it, it changes how you do things for sure. We don't want to give ourselves a case of the should haves, right? Now I sound like your grandma. Deal with it. Okay. So. My 30 plus years with the muse. Um, Bookish says, I don't think I have a muse. Unless that's the same thing as just having an idea that leads to something. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I think it's different for everybody probably. And then Grix stops in and says, I think by the muse what is meant is... M the inspiration that sparks the idea... And the feeling of the words coming from a source external to yourself while you write it out. But to me, inspiration is on. But to me, inspiration on its on is like fire without fuel. One has to work first and let the inspiration come when it may. Um, I can see that like come see come saw kind of stuff right there but um i don't know because a lot of times you can't work unless you're inspired and i think honestly it's really different from depending on what kind of art you're making because if you are writing fiction it's a lot easier to just like word dump and just be like, okay, I know what's going to happen in this chapter. Let me just start writing and hope something sparks an interest to me and then I can go. If you're writing poetry, it's probably a little more difficult because you need to have something to inspire you to write that poem. Um, so I think it might be a little bit of both, um, like six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, Nonfiction might even be easier in that sense because you know exactly what you're going to write. And so you could do a first pass. And then after that, if you're inspired, go, oh, I can tell this a much different way. I could clean this up. And like when I do my painting, um, I usually paint to empty my head. So like the only thing I'm inspired with is like, 
dumping emotion and not having a plan and just going in there and beating the fucking canvas or the paper with the brushes and shit until something like comes to me and that's kind of the same thing as what Grix is talking about you just do the thing and hope that something hits you know so I could, I could see I could see that both ways and then Bookish says yeah I've never felt like what I was writing was coming from somewhere other than myself though I'm writing fiction I give myself freedom to write what comes to me with the idea of cleaning it up later and that's kind of just like what I was saying. I would say the danger with that is that you're writing in the sense that you already know, like in your head, what you're writing will not be good. So you can like, and like, I don't mean like that what you're writing sucks, but like the idea that you're like, oh, well, I can just do whatever I want because I, I'm going to just fix this later. So it's like you're giving yourself the out right at the beginning that what you're writing may not be great. And, um, I don't know. I, I much rather for me prefer the sword of Damocles hanging above my head when I'm doing anything. But again, that's just me. Okay. Um, Michael says, um, on this same video, he says, I was lucky during the satanic panic. We're just going to leave it right there. We're not going to tell you what he said after that. <laughs> No, okay, so I was lucky during the satanic panic. I was into metal, played D&D, &D, and went to a Catholic school that didn't teach art. So I never had it to turn anything in that would have gotten me caught or called to the principal's office. That's actually fucking hysterical. And honestly, if anyone needed to go to the principal's office at the Catholic school, I would say it was the dude that listened to metal and played d and I'm just saying. So that motherfucker dodged a bullet. Let's be real. Okay, and now we have from Little Hippie Little Horror. I was born in 1975. My mom used to drop me and my sister at the local mom and pop video shop while she went grocery shopping. Oh, man, the fucking days. You're taking me back. You are taking me back. We rented the Friday the 13th movies every weekend and watched the shit out of them. Ugh. To this day, my Jason collection continues to thrive. Mine too. Mine too. I just realized how many different copies of DVD and Blu-ray and shit of the Friday the 13th movies, let alone the VHS copies I had, that um, I have collected over the years. And so, um, like, just a couple months ago, I gave my kid, like, this big old collection um, because... I'm like, I seriously, I mean, I don't even have a TV right now, but like, I'm like, I really don't need this many different versions of these movies. That's awesome. Yeah, you took me right there. I can smell the fucking nasty carpet and the wannabe microwave popcorn in the video store right now. It's great. Tony says, I went to Catholic elementary school in fourth grade, oh, and then in fourth grade art class, I tried to turn in a piece of free drawing. I drew Godzilla leaving Tokyo with a subway car dangling in his mouth, as you should. The stupid teacher, who wasn't even a nun, accused me of drawing Satan. I almost got thrown out of school, but luckily, luckily my mother was able to explain to the mother superior who Godzilla was. Good times. Dude, that is so fucking stupid. Like, that makes me just mad. I absolutely hate how, like, religious stuff is always like, if you don't do exactly what they want you to do, this is obviously Satan. And yes, like, Godzilla. But, like, where in the Bible does it say Satan is taller than buildings and breathes fire is kind of a lizard and eats trains like it's just oh my god i feel for you i feel for you um okay grick says nice video thanks for passing by my channel many people passively wait for the muse while doing anything except writing 
But if there is a muse at all, you better be on your desk writing when it shows up. Or be ready to fucking go when it's there. That's that's my thing. I, I'm a big fan of when you get struck by lightning, you need to fucking start typing. Like, I, I don't know if... But, like, uh, David Novak was saying, like, he can get hit and then like roll it around so i think it's going to be different for everybody um and then daniel says i remember those teachers be as creative as you can be no too creative too creative (laughs) yeah for real for real um i don't know that's probably that that should probably be the fucking um subheading for OnlyFans. that's pretty good um okay and now this is from jeff jeff says how much do you think the gamifying increased your readership. What made it most successful? Okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, on the video, How to Write and Promote a Successful Book Series, Do's and Don'ts, I talked about um, my Black Star Canyon series and how I gamified it. I think it increased the readership because people not only became excited, like the readers I had were not only excited about, let me switch this up a little bit here um my readers weren't only excited about the books they were excited about like doing the things and playing the game and getting higher up in the thing and so because a lot of this stuff was on social media like they were getting like they were doing a lot of heavy lifting as far as the promotion for my books were going so like you got points if you posted like reposted um things that i posted about the book you got points for um reposting reviews you got um more points for creating your own posts and then you got points for every social media place you put it on you got points for leaving reviews on the different platforms where you could purchase the books So because they made the engagement fun and then every time they got a badge, they would get points for posting the badge on their social medias as well. So um, their like excitement about what was happening was enough to get new readers involved. Um, So with that said, that like really up to the level of everything. And the thing that made it really cool was I think that was going on in between books two and three. So it made a lot of people go back and get the first two collections as um, uh, the third season was going. So that, I mean, that that was huge because the first collected whatever that did good, but that's when I was first really growing. So by the time the third book came out, like that's when everything was like huge for me. Um, and again, it wasn't like I had a huge best selling book, but I was doing like well enough off of just that series to like take care of myself when that series was going and over the next couple years um it continued to go because again like it would be every six months before the next um serial thing started and it got to the point where i had like um things where I'm like okay so every six months this is going to happen and this seriously happened in between the second and the third when I put this together that like each month I had to do something to tease what was coming in the next um the next season so like you have to stay consistent you have to stay in people's minds but the gamification really increased a lot of stuff but you got to make it fun it can't be work you know like it can't be like grinding shit on minecraft you know what i'm saying because i did a bunch of interviews way back when when i started doing the gamification stuff on different podcasts 
um, and got into like really deep detail. And that was again when that was going well. So I had like a lot more facts and figures and shit. So if I could find anything like that, I'll hit you guys up and let you know. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Booker says, have you ever done social media posts other than YouTube promoting your book series or otherwise? Yes. Um, back in the fiction days, we'll say, I would do um, stuff on YouTube. I did stuff on Facebook, stuff on Twitter, a little bit on Instagram, um, but mainly on Facebook and then was doing Facebook ads um, along with it. And then I was doing Amazon ads right when Amazon ads started. And I didn't love the, um, engagement I was getting off of it. And so I stopped that because that was more expensive than Facebook ads and less targeted. So four things you need to build your legacy as a writer. I don't even remember making that video. But uh, Michael says, great video, a lot of food for thought here. Huh, maybe I should go back and listen to it because I have no idea. The only reason why I know it's my video is because I see my little logo on it. So I guess that was something that happened. You're all gay, based. <laughs> Love it. Okay, Booker says, oh, this is on a beautiful woman asked me to read Virginia Woolf. Oh, my God. Oh, Booker says, well done. I've only read three books by Wolf, and this isn't one. I think it's because the Wolf book that so many people were talking about back in the day. Oh, because it was the... Okay. I think its popularity amongst Wolf's books took off after the movie adaptation. When was that? Was that in the... The 90s? Or was that in the 2000s? And was the movie good? Who was in it? I wonder if I saw the movie. Hmm. I don't know. Was the movie good? I'll, I'll leave it there. Caitlin! Okay, this is in my um, downtown LA Bacon Bloody Mary. Um, it definitely looked like a giant shrimp in the bush. Yes. And we're not talking about OnlyFans. It did look like a giant shrimp in the bush. I agree. But that would be like the biggest shrimp ever seen, known to man, right? Like it couldn't have been real. Could not have been real. Like that would have been like bigger than my head. Like probably like torso size shrimp. I don't know. Maybe that's a big lobster. Chasey, I really enjoyed this video. Good. I'm glad. Chris. Okay, Chris always fucking comes at me hard. So let's see what Chris says. Orlando naturally loved solitary places, vast views, and to free himself forever and ever and ever alone. He felt the need of something which he could attach his floating heart to. Gradually, the flutter in and about him stilled itself about him stilled itself now here's the thing chris does this thing where a lot of times he will just leave quotes from books but then doesn't tell me if it's from the book or not so sometimes it could be a quote from the book that sounds like it could be a quote from the book but chris is really smart so chris might just be like going hey i'm gonna tell you something and here it is so thank you chris for that um, okay, write a poet poetry chat book in one hour. And, um, this person, uh, Haggle, I, I'm butchering your name. Wicked approach to write a poetry. Got to try this. Yes, you do. And let me know how it goes for you. I would love to hear about that. Mild rumpus from reading this life sent me here. Oh, cool. MJ, thank you for sending Mild Rumpus here. And Mild Rumpus is not from Chelsea um, in Ingleland. Just so you know. Okay? In case anyone was worried about that. Not from England. I found out the hard way. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and then here we go from the live stream. 
Have you tried your hand at writing sold in sorcery or horror, says Tony. Um, oh, wait. <laughs> and then MP Hunt says, dude, yeah, this MFer has tried his hand at everything by now. LOL. Only joking. I think he has tried most po pulpy styles. His published stuff is mostly poetry and pulpy crime stuff like Layman Trandler, etc. dialed up to 11. I like that. Thank you. I think he'd write some kicked ass stuff in the styles you suggested. Imagine some little separate collections of horror crime, dark fantasy, sword and sorcery collections for Matt. They kick so much ass. NP Hunt, I appreciate the fact that you think that. Um, but yes, I will tell you some stuff here. Um, I wrote like a splatterpunk series. Um, it was only two books. It was supposed to be three. But um, I got scared of writing it. And um, I stopped writing the third book. And that might be a little weird. I know I've talked about it before. But if you guys want to hear the story about that, leave it down below. But if you go to my Amazon, there's this book called Bloodlust Romance and Bloodlust Revenge. It is not for the faint at heart. It is, and it was written in like the mid 2000s, like 2000, like this, it was actually a script that I was supposed to make a movie about in 2003 or four. And then um, in 2000, no, in 2006, because that's why we moved to Oregon because we were supposed to shoot it in Oregon. And then um, when the funding got pulled, I just decided to write a novel out of it. And it's really weird, and it's really graphic, and if you don't like splatterpunk kind of shit, do not read that book. But if you're into, like, really hardcore horror and just disgusting shit that is, like, just shock value but also a mind fuck, then definitely read those books. And here's another thing. The only reason why I keep those books up, this is so fucking sad, the only reason why I keep those books up is because they sell really well in Germany. So if that tells you anything, there you go. Uh, I do have some really weird short stories as well that are like, I just thought they were like normal short stories, but then people would tell me they were horror because of how it made them feel and the subject matter and stuff like that. So my short stories tend to be really weird. Um, and then the last uh, collection, like um, chapbook collection, I have Preview of a Dangerous Mind. That one has some really weird um, shit in it. And I've done, like when I was doing Weird Mask, I've done Westerns, I've done sci-fi um like, I was doing this serial for a while called Space 1959 um, that I thought was really fun. Um, as far as sword and sorcery stuff, I've started a lot of sword and sorcery stuff. Um, but I... Like, and I've said this a bunch of times, I get so caught up on the world building that I don't have fun writing the book. So... Um, like, I have this one that's, like, a buddy thing where there's, um, and they're based on characters I played in D&D &D, um, that I think would be really cool. And a lot of those stories are based on something I tried to do when I was in high school. So it's, I don't know, it's fun, it's whatever. And then um, I did one... Uh, sword and sorcery story when I was living out in the desert that actually got published um who put that out I can't remember who put it out but then like I rewrote it and changed the name of the character so it's like it's I don't know I guess it's kind of like how oh well, yeah I guess it's kind of like how Robert E. Howard had the Cole stories and then um, when the Conan stories took off, started putting um, Conan in the place of Cole and a lot of the old Cole stories. So, whatever. But yeah, no, I, um, I have done that in the past. I feel like if I were to do anything else like that, like whether it be horror or sci-fi or 
anything like that, that it would more likely than not be sword and sorcery. Like, if I ever went back to writing fiction, it would be very, very barbaric. Maybe even dystopian, but barbaric, you know? I don't know. Um, it would definitely be a lack of what we have kind of deal. So, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Mindy says, watch the rest of this live this morning. I want that writing journal day planner. Okay. <laughs> we were talking, because like I was going to do this day planner thing a while ago, and then it just like fell off my um, thing. Um, then MP says, I agree, not my thing per se, but I know it's a massive market, and Matt could make an absolute killing doing that stuff. You think so, huh? I just had no idea that there is really that huge of a market for it. I guess people like to jot things down. Like bullet planning and shit like that, yeah? Hmm. Char! Oh my gosh. Um, Char says, you hit all the finer points of why I did not enjoy, enjoy Virginia Woolf's books. <laughs> I don't like to do a whole lot of what the hell is this author thinking slash doing stuff when I'm reading. I don't like feeling... I don't like the feeling of analyzing every sentence and her inner thoughts on a subject. Give me characters that breathe and have and an interesting story and let it flow from there. All this hidden meaning, intentions, and yes, yes, lazy writing bores me to tears. Exactly what I told my English teacher when asked to read Virginia Woolf. I'm not a Woolf fan at all. Great video. Wow. Maybe Char should have done this video because she seems like... Mm. She could have really knocked that out of the park. Shar, thank you so much. Nicholas on that same video says, never read her books, but go watch the film The Hours, which is about Virginia Woolf. I did not know that. That's the one that Nicole Kidman won an uh, Oscar for because she was wearing a fake nose, right? That's that one. And then James c comes in on a video from a long time ago that says, blankety blank has royally cursed in the message box because I didn't agree because he didn't agree with me. Yeah, it happens. Old man yelling at clouds, right? Um, and then NP says, watching this back, just wanted to emphasize that reading definitely doesn't always make people more empathetic because sociopaths are usually way beyond help or education, etc. Preach! For most of us, it helps us understand different perspectives but obviously it doesn't always work that way some people read more so that they can feel superior there's not a single aspect of life that doesn't get distorted and abused by some people but generally i think most readers end up being better people but can also end up being oversensitive yes also, really glad I was able to make you laugh so much a few times on that stream. Dude, seriously, thank you. Take care and laugh as much as possible. You're a great person. Well, I'll just keep taking off my pants in front of the mirror. And I'll crack myself up over and over again. Um, oh, and then Bookscapades. Everyone go follow Bookscapades right here. This is Shaylin's channel where she's like she keeps threatening to do some like fun bookshoppy stuff and then not do it. Um uh, Shaylin is um, laughing her mother effing A off. Um, I'm just glad you kept the DDR talking at the end. It was a blast, like always. Love you, dude. Love you, Shay. Um, also, oh, wait. Did I miss this? Oh, I did. Okay, let's go back to this. Then, um, and we'll come back to Shaylin. Also, therapy takes a long time. It totally does. A temporary catharsis for getting shit off our chest through poetry, etc. is helpful in an immediate way, but generally doesn't solve um, things in the long term. Keep up with the therapy as long as it takes. Then the poetry and writing in general will always be there. The counseling will either help or it won't, but if it's going to stick, then it won't be the same kind of immediate gratification that we get from venting. I hope that makes sense and I hope you're getting back on track. I am getting back on track. Anytime you feel down, just ask yourself, what would Mr. T do? Mr. T would fucking pity the fool, dude. That's what would fucking happen, dude. Uh, just kidding with that. 
But um, obviously, just want to give you reasons to laugh and smile. You just did. Um, only know, only you know what's best for you. I just want you to get onto a really good track and be happy, dude. Thank you so much. That's amazing. That you touched me in a way that I won't report you for. I appreciate you. And just so you guys know, I got a text from Shaylin earlier today. Shaylin got the pad out. And as we speak, Shaylin is doing Dance Dance Revolution. So fingers crossed that that TikTok starts soon. And then we have a message from Michael on the video I posted today, how to know if you're good enough to be a writer. He's like, I don't know who this cat is you're talking about, but he sounds a lot like me, lol. Thanks, this helps. I appreciate that, Michael. Thank you. Okay, so those are the ones I have responded to as of now. So that is where we're going to cut this because we are already 49 minutes in the hole. Okay, so thank you for all your amazing comments and questions. I'm going to go back through and just give you guys a little hello so you know I wasn't ignoring you there and um keep them coming you guys have great things to say and you guys make me smile so with all of that said have some coconut water get your groceries when you can get them keep buying my books type hard and i will talk to you all later I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.